So, this is the truth behind the beef with Eddie Murphy and Bobby Brown. Well, Bobby and Eddie. It's your boy Carcino. Let's get into it. Now, this goes back to the crazy 80s. Where everybody was hot. Everything was loud and big. Massive. Michael Jackson explodes and takes over music in 83. One album becomes the biggest record of all times. And his sister follows that up just three years later with her monster album, Control. Then you have Bobby Brown with his Don't Be Cruel album. And the Ghostbusters 2 song. Bobby Brown was the biggest thing on two feet. Then, in the middle of that, was an actor slash comedian, or comedian slash actor, Eddie Murphy. Known for his fame on Saturday Night Live, made it big with his debut breakout movie, 48 Hours, followed by Trading Places. And Beverly Hills Cop. Those three set him on a pedestal. Not to mention his stand up comedy, Delirious and Raw. At this time, Eddie now is making so many movies to he's become the it man in Hollywood. He had just did Beverly Hills Cop too. And he runs into Whitney Houston's um, assistant, and Whitney wanted Eddie bad, and Eddie wanted to get over Whitney. So they basically dated. They're dating. The mom is. She wanted this union to happen so bad. Like, oh, this is, this is where I want my daughter to be. My daughter be safe with Eddie. Eddie is where she needs to be, and this is it. So. Her mom is like, don't worry, Eddie. I'm sure, my daughter got some faults. But, you know, you can work with it. You know, don't give up on her. She's the one. And she's the one telling everybody they're going to be married. They're going to get married. They're going to get married. Eddie wasn't saying none of this. <laughs> but Eddie is like, look. You know, it's cool for right now, but, you know, it's, you know, it's whatever. Eddie's not even going public with this. Now, Bobby Brown is the new thing on fire. Him and Janet Jackson at the same time was killing the R&B game. Control and Bobby Brown's solo album, Don't Be Cruel. Now, they did a tour with, uh, you know, uh, Teddy Jam, you know, Teddy and all those good, and Teddy and Jimmy Jam put this tour together. So, Janet Jackson, Bobby Brown, and a couple other acts, like I'll Be Sure, and all of them, they're all on tour. So, while they're on this tour, Janet Jackson and Bobby Brown start humping around. Yeah, that's what they say. No, it ain't that way. But it was that way. <laughs> so Janet and Bobby was messing around on this tour. You know, why are they out here performing? And during this time, Eddie Murphy shows up. Because they I think they tour date came into one of the cities. And Ed went and checked them out. And so he invited them to come to his where he was shooting the movie. And I want to say, at this time, this is when, because uh, this is back in 88. I think he was filming either Coming to America or something like that he was filming. So when he ran into him at the concert, and they actually had a conversation, it was a lot different because Eddie used to want Janet. 
So that's what made it so funny. They had a conversation just like, oh, man, you guys are together, man, and all of this stuff. Like, y'all a couple? He was like, no, 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 man. We just friends. Yeah, we on the show. Eddie, Eddie knew. <laughs> that's bullshit, man. You, now, you mean to tell me that y'all ain't effing? <laughs> you know, I was going to hook up with you, Janet. You know that. You were supposed to be with me. Michael told me I can't talk to you. I asked Michael. I said, Michael, I want to date Jack. You know what he said? He said, no, no, Eddie. No, 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 Eddie. Not my family, Eddie. She's, Janet is sweet. She's, no, you don't want to get mixed up with my family, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, after the conversation, you know, they Eddie and Bobby were cool. You know, like, hey, you know, we talk, and when, uh, like, about a year later, down the road, and, you know, they got to talk again, like, when it was just them two. And this time, I think he was filming Harlem Nights. And he was like, well, you know, what was dating Janet Jackson like, man? Does she, you know, man, does she really got that? Like, man, I know it's good. He was like, yeah, man, it's nice. <laughs> and he was like, man, but you got Whitney, though. He was, man, she just want to smoke weed all the time, though. He was like, she's good. It's all right. Don't get me wrong. But she just want to smoke weed all day. And I ain't got time for that. Which is right up Bobby's alley. So what Bobby did was he manipulated Jackie Harris. So y'all don't know who Jackie Harris is. Jackie Harris from two two seven fame. Jackie <laughs> You know, she used to always play that role. But anyway, Jackie Harris was cool with the Whit you know, the Houston family, so Bobby them manipulated her into like doing the introduction basically. Like introduced me to Whitney. Like, have you met Whitney? He's like, no, nah, haven't met Whitney at all. <laughs> so she introduced them all. It's like, oh, I hooked them up. So when she met she came there with Eddie at this party, so she introduced him. And from that point on, you know. Bobby started talking with Whitney and all this, and Eddie don't know what's going on. Next thing you know, Whitney left the party with Bobby Brown. And Eddie was looking for her like, Will anybody see Whitney? Where the hell did she go? He's like, Oh, she left with Bobby. She left with Bobby? <laughs> So once that happened, you know, he was all messed up. I mean, it was just the way it went down. So he started packing her stuff up that she had there. Like, I'm this is I'm over. She was like, okay. <laughs> she was all cool with it. She wanted Bobby Brown. She was in love with Bobby. And that was it. And the fact that how close and how quick she fell for Bobby. And Bobby was still messing up with his baby mom. Eddie was pissed. And I mean pissed. He was gonna have he was gonna have Bobby Brown on the soundtracks of the movie and all that stuff. Oh no, he canceled that. Oh no, Eddie was vicious. Man, towards Bobby Brown, man. He was really not happy with Bobby. And Eddie fell into a state of depression. When this was done, Eddie Murphy gained like 30 pounds, and he wasn't the same no more. So when they finished Harlem Nights, because he was so busy, he was writing, he written it. He was acting, and he was directing. He was completely drained at that time. He was still mentally dealing with the, the stress of what was going on with what just happened. And... He had gained so much weight, he did that, he did um, another 48 hours, 
basically back to back. They were all at the same time. And you watch another 48 hours. Eddie Murphy, that was probably the biggest you've ever seen him. He was big as a house in that movie. Because Eddie was just doing nothing but eating and staying in the house depressed. Then he started making records again. Like, I'm finna come back with records and albums. And, and they're like, an album? And Eddie Murphy's trying to get his record career going, his R&B career. Because he thought, at this point, he's finna compete with Bobby Brown. And he could do that. Like, I can put out. Eddie Murphy be like, I can come out right now and put out a record. And I'll be right there with Bobby Brown. I ain't gonna be doing no dancing, but I know I can sing better than Bobby Brown. So, that wasn't the case. <laughs> People were still buying Bobby at the time, but Bobby had basically stopped music because he felt he wasn't getting paid. It was a big lawsuit with his album. He was fighting with the record company on royalties on his money. Then, the Ghostbusters song, that single paid Bobby Brown more than money than he got from his album at the time. He had to sue for, to get more money out of his record because of the way his deal was. He's like, I sold four million records and there's no way I'm only getting like two million dollars. That don't make no sense. So there was a lot of different things that took place at that time. But Eddie Murphy was like, I'm back in the record but business now with put your mouth on me put your mouth on me and he ran off and got married real quick to show like I'm a show Whitney she went to she finna marry Bobby Brown I ain't finna be alone <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna show them so Eddie went and got this done now all of this beef stuff was going back and forth for a minute with Eddie and Bobby. They was not talking to each other, wouldn't deal with them. Anybody that was dealing with Bobby Brown, Eddie Murphy didn't want nothing to do with it. You were completely cut off. So, all of a sudden, Eddie becomes Eddie again. He's back on top. He starts seeing Bobby Brown fame decline. He's feeling good. He don't want Whitney no more. He's got a bad woman. Like, my woman will make Whitney look like dirt. So he's feeling good about himself. Puts out a movie. He's back in shape, losing weight, in the gym, working out, treadmills. Eddie got a personal trainer, got a gym in his house. He's back in shape for this movie, Boomerang. With the number one soundtrack in the world. With the face running it. And Whitney Houston's The Bodyguard soundtrack. Comes in. And beats it. That was the only thing <laughs> that set Eddie Murphy off. The only thing to beat that soundtrack was the Bodyguard soundtrack with Whitney Houston. Eddie Nim was back. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, man, the Boba Ray soundtrack. And it ran up against that Bodyguard soundtrack. It's the only thing to beat it. Unbelievable. He lost to Whitney Houston again. So, Bobby was finished after he comes back with a successful album, Bobby, but, you know, nothing comes of it. And to tell you the truth, I don't know, because Eddie is so private, I don't know if him and Bobby Brown, like, ever patched things up. To tell you the truth, they might have met and patched it up, but Eddie Murphy is so private. Believe me. Him and Liam Neeson are probably the two most privatest people in the United States of America. <laughs> like, literally, Liam Neeson, the man who talks on the phone and talks about, I'm coming to get you. 
This man does not use a phone in real life. He does not own a cell phone. If somebody want to get in contact with Liam Neeson, you have to call other people and then they'll go find Liam Neeson. He has no cell phone on him. He's very difficult to reach. For those of y'all who's in the know. So. Anyway, that's the truth behind that. Uh, we all know Bobby Brown broke up with Janet Jackson. Everybody heard that. But they didn't really break up. They weren't really dating. They were just messing around. She was just letting them know, like, my daddy ain't going to let me have no relationship with no black entertainers. He's just not going to do it. But it's like you're on tour and you sing in control, but your daddy is really in control. <laughs> But Eddie missed a shot with Janet, so that's why he was shocked. Bobby was hitting like, man, Bobby, you got in there. You got your shot. <laughs> anyway, I'm out. It's your boy Carcino. Subscribe. I'm going to put some cards in here so y'all can check out the cards and, and watch some other videos that's lined up. And... You can talk to me at Twitter at Carcino. I'm on Instagram at Carcino too. You know. Enjoy the rest of your day. And if you don't hear from me in a while, happy holidays.